where the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control has commenced activities to enforce the ban on the production of alcoholic beverages in small pack volumes of 200 millimeters as well as sachets across the country. The Director General of the Agency, Mujisola Adeyeyi, said this at a meeting with stakeholders in the sector at the expiry or the expiration of a five-year window period given to producers to reduce production by 50 percent. This was in 2018. We have details on this report. The World Health Organization reveals that the harmful consumption of alcohol is linked to more than 200 health conditions, including infectious and non-infectious diseases. It is also associated with social problems such as alcohol addiction and gender-based violence. Alcoholic drinks in sachets, pet and glass bottles are affordable and can come in handy and also be easily carried around by underage and young adults without notice. Five years ago, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control had a similar high-level meeting with other agencies to recommend a 50% reduction in the production of sachets and small-volume alcoholic beverages. It also moved to stop the registration of the same products two years ago. On the part of the agency, NAFTA committed to ensure that the validity of renewal licenses of already registered alcoholic beverages in the affected category do not exceed 31st January 2024. The agency says this move in line with government policy as a follow-up on the recommendation made by the World Health Organization on the need to curb the menace of the abuse of alcohol through the regulation of marketing and restricting the availability of alcohol. This will be done through the commencement of a nationwide enforcement. This enforcement was done simultaneously at the same time in various cities across the country. Meanwhile, many products at the manufacturing facilities in various cities, such as Jos, Elugu, Ibadan, Lagos, and Ota, were evacuated and others put on hold due to sheer volume and size that we could not evacuate, but all are waiting destruction. NAVDAC appeals to the public to provide necessary intelligence and information to stop culprits from producing these categories of alcoholic beverages in order to halt circulation across the country. And to uh, give uh, further, Philip, now to the move of NAVDAC, they have, of course, uh, embarked on a mass enforcement of this latest directive uh, banning the production of alcoholic beverages in small pack volumes of 200 millimeters as well as uh, pep bottles even you know uh, you know containers with lower than the 200 uh, millimeter mark all this in a bid to ensure a safer society Ibrahim and um, you know the statistics are reeling uh, when you also look at the fact we live in Lagos and I'm sure that I'm not speaking for Lagos alone how um, rampant, uh, you know, this particular commodity has become. And, you know, in the words of NAFDAG, it has become so, so severe, so serious that even school children are found with it. There is no regulation. There is no one curbing it. The sellers are just giving it to anybody who desires it at, at a fee. There was a reason for the manufacturers to produce this particular size of, um, you know, this, um, you know, alcohol beverage. But Apparently, it has found its way in, in the wrong hands, hence this move uh, by the authorities. Yeah, I feel the, author the authority actually moved, they, they, they're actually moving in the right direction because at the end of the day, it's saving the lives of Nigerians because some people, they do not understand the implication of taking this. That's why those who produce it, you know, um, those who produce it under a proper regulate, uh, regulation, they will always warn you that you should drink responsibly. But people who can't even read, we see the way... Uh, some of these motto boys, so to, so to speak, the way they behave sometimes after they've consumed 
you know, not just the alcohol, but, you know, mixing it with different things, you know, referring to it as uh, Okpanyi and all of those, you know, nomenclatures they gave it. So some people believe that without taking it, they can't be, uh, they can't be, they can't be able to, they, they won't be able to do what they want to run do. Run long hours, run. work yeah. for long hours. So, so and then it, it comes back to affect them. So, so I'm not saying that it is, it is not okay for some people who take, who see the good side of it, but the truth of the matter is that uh, the disadvantage in taking such alcohol is more than the advantage. For instance, you know, it affects various parts of the body, including the brain, liver, heart, and immune system. Absolutely. And the brain, it also depresses activity, leading to impaired judgment, coordination, and memory. It also affects the liver, where it's metabolized, potentially leading to liver damage or disease. So over time, excessive alcohol consumption can weaken the heart muscle and increase the risk of cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular diseases. So it can also weaken the immune system, making the body susceptible to infection. So you can imagine how long um, health Over issues these have presented, you know, in, 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 and they find it very difficult to resolve. I know the importance of liver to, to the body organ. To, to the body. Indeed, this is, um, you know, such a very serious health concern. And, of course, it goes beyond your health because as crucial as, as the health of individuals uh, is now there is also you know the other attendant consequences the mm -hmm. psychological the social impact you know how it will also you know affect the national development That's people right. that are supposed to perform mm -hmm. at you know you know their optimum are now yeah. found to be really not that the effect of uh, the abuse of, of of these substances and then there is also the economic angle because there was a yeah. protest yesterday and I, I, I'm seeing it's also kind of being reflected in the papers because According to the manufacturers, they say uh, under their caucus, under their body now, they say uh, the issue of notice, uh, jobs of at least 500,000 individuals are now at risk with this ban and they are asking for some form of consideration. Mm. But uh, Professor Adeyeye has spoken that in engagement with these same individuals, as well as stakeholders, years back, they all agreed that January the 31st this year would be the deadline you know for the expiration of um, you know this production which means that as from february the first they and other partners will kick off mm -hmm. you know enforcing the ban so okay. how that people are now coming on now to complain about not being given sufficient notice that's that is also you know an, an interesting you know angle and um, we, we we really wait to see how it will all pan out because I'm also concerned about the enforcement. Mm. Does um, NAFTA? Yeah, it's, it's not the have, first time they are doing this because I've it's, seen. It's not the first. I've time. seen several places where they, they say they've, they've banned this, they've that banned that, and then year in year out, you still get to see all of these things. You know, it's, still making it's, their way. It's to still that uh, it, it looks like something that will be a very Herculean task. Mm -hmm. Look at the ban on um, uh, Indian hemp uh, smoking. Mm -hmm. We see how it has even gone beyond. You know, hiding it. You know, people do this in the right. open. People right. don't just do this in the comfort of their of their homes. Yeah. But we see the brazen display of um, the youth and you know others, other categories of people who uh, indulge in in this act. Yeah, there is yet one thing. knowing that it, it's a crime. Yeah, there is one thing. You know, to have the law in place. There's another thing for you to get the law to enforce these laws. Those who are the enforcers are they not part of the abusers? And they are friends to some of these people who are supposed to be arrested. So if, they, if we are not um, ensuring that we do our own proper house cleaning, how do we clean the environment? So it should start from those who will be the enforcers of this law, talking about the security agencies who are supposed to go after these people who are abusing these substances. So it's very important that we do the right thing. And, and get it done at the end of the day. Uh, but so far, so good. Uh, health experts and others are commending uh, the directive, this move by the government, and everyone is hoping, is of course watching to see just how much clouds the government will be able to pull uh, this time around to ensure a, a safer, saner uh, society. Let's quickly bring up uh, some news uh, updates, or more updates, that is, Beginning with uh, President Bola Tinubu, who is now back from his private visits to France. The president returned on Tuesday evening and was welcomed at the presidential wing of the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport by the Minister of the FCT, as well as the Secretary to the Government of the Federation and the, president, the Chief of Staff to the President. Others who were on ground to welcome the president back to the country with the governor of Kaduna State as well as senior security officers.
President Tinubu left Nigeria on January the 24th to France, but a statement signed by Ajiri Ingalali, who is the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, didn't state the purpose of the visit. But it did mention that President Tinubu will return to the country in the first week of February. Meanwhile, the Presidential Committee on Emergency Food Intervention, chaired by the Chief of Staff to uh, President Tinubu, has met at the Presidential Villa to begin fine-tuning plans and actions targeted at addressing food shortages across the country. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, disclosed this at the end of the emergency food intervention meeting in Abuja and says the federal government is greatly concerned about the plight of Nigerians and the hardship caused by the removal of petrol subsidy. He says one of the steps the federal government is taking is to unlock the food available in storages across the country through the Ministry of Agriculture's Strategic Grain Reserve. The meeting of the Presidential Committee on Emergency Food Intervention also had in attendance the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, the National Security Advisor, Minister of Finance, and the Coordinating Minister of the Economy. Uh, uh, to address the issue of... Uh uh, food uh, shortage or uh, lack of uh, no food on the table of most uh, uh, Nigerians. Now, some of these will involve unlocking um, the food that are available in most of the storage facilities around the country. You know that uh, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has uh, uh, some food reserve that is going to be uh, made available to Nigerians. Government is also talking to uh, major millers and major commodity traders. Let us sit now with the challenge of insecurity that ravaged communities across Mangu, Bukos, and Barakin Ladi for months has badly affected food sufficiency in the food producing communities in the state and everyone is worried about the looming food crisis and hope for means and ways to guarantee food security. Phnom Joshua reports. For over a year now, Mangu, Bokos and Barkiladi council areas of Plato State have suffered series of violent attacks that killed more than 1,000 people including women and children, and destroyed so many properties. Mangu local government area is the biggest producer of biggest maize, guinea corn, and other food crops in the state. Locals and farmers have fled their communities to safety following incessant attacks faced in recent times. This has now caused a shortfall in the production of food crops. Uh, the issue of food security has already manifested. There's no two ways about it. No two ways about it at all. There is going to be serious food scarcity. Mongo as a community, as a local government, you know, uh, uh, is basically known for food production. You know, we produce a lot of this, uh, this corn, the maize we have here all around the country, very, very, in a very good quantity and quality. Honestly speaking, there's going to be food shortages because Mongo happens to be one of the major local government that produce grains and agricultural products. The local economy in the area has also been affected. Governor Caleb Mutfang and the paramount ruler of the Mangu Council area are worried about the situation. The economy of Mangu is destroyed. And we know that the Mangu market is an international market is the busiest food produce market in Plateau State. And I can imagine the millions that have been lost. We are known as farmers. We don't know any other business that's funded. So we don't know why, what this is coming at this time. We visited these stakeholders from the native and Fulani communities to hear from them. The state government calls on residents to unite against enemies of the progress of the state. I want to appeal to our people. 
that we must look out for those who are bent on dividing us. There are people who are bent on dividing us. It is only when they divide us they can take advantage of us. Food scarcity is looming across these communities. All stakeholders and relevant authorities must come together, join hands and profile workable measures to put an end to the challenge in the areas. Phnom Joshua, TVC News, Joss.